Hey guys, Kevin here. I hope you're all doing okay. What I wanted to do in this video was ask whether you should upgrade your iMac or your MacBook, whether it's worth upgrading or whether you should start thinking about replacing it. You know, I'll be talking about my iMac, but you know, it's all applicable to MacBooks and Macs and things like that as well. And most of what I'll be saying is applicable to PCs as well. So you can see, I've been reading about it because a few things I want to uh, talk about here. But this is the iMac that I'm thinking about upgrading the hard drive from a 7200 RPM hard drive to an SSD. And I can do that either by replacing the internal hard drive or by replacing optical drive, which I don't use. So that's probably the, the, the most sensible option if I was going down that route would be to replace the DVD drive because I never use it and it means that I can put in a fast drive there for booting, etc. I can use the, the internal one for, you know, storage and keeping files, etc. Now, one of the reasons that myself and a lot of people raise this question about upgrading the iMac in particular is because it's a little bit of a pain. If I show you the, the upgrade guide, um, it's not impossible and it's not even the hardest, but what you need to do is you need to buy suction cups and then you need to replace the glass get it out. It's, a, it's definitely a lot trickier than it is with most computer systems, most PCs and most lap, uh, laptops. It's more of a pain, without a doubt. And if I look here, this is the crucial.com UK website. And this is some of the options they got here. And for a 2.5 inch, 7mm uh, internal hard drive, and it says D, for 525 gigabytes, we're looking at £144, which is um, not the most, you know, expensive. Um, it does get a little bit more expensive when you start adding more storage, but if I was using the, the internal hard drive, it'd be mostly just looking at, perhaps even the smaller one, but for the price, I think this seems to be the best price, 144 for the 525 rather than the 91 pounds for the 275. Now, the question isn't whether that's um, possible, I can go out and I can get the SSD drive, you know, and I can probably pay, it's probably about £10 or so for the suction cups and the little accessories you need to do to replace that. You know, if I had to just try and do this myself just now, I'd struggle and, you know, like taking the glass off because, you know, it's a little bit fidgety. But that's not a problem because there's lots of guides online and it doesn't look too difficult when you actually break it down. So if you're thinking about upgrading your iMac, adding in, you know, replacing the hard drive or replacing the optical drive and putting in an SSD to improve performance then don't be put off by the, the whole taking off the screen and things like that. I think most people would be okay as long as you follow it step by step. But whether you should or not is the question. That's what I want to tackle in this video. Now, there's a few guys and a few of these uh, kind of articles about this. They all kind of give similar advice. And if you look down here, what they say, should I upgrade my, uh, upgrade my Mac or buy a new one? Zero to two years, uh, consider upgrading your current hardware. Um, it says two to four years, it's a toss up. So they're saying between two and four years, you should either upgrade or replace, and it's a toss up. And after four years, buy a new Mac. Now, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that at all. Um, that's a late 2009 iMac. I bought it early 2010. So it's you know seven and a bit years old now. And that, I would put that in the two to four years bracket as in, you know, now it's the time I should maybe, you know, it's a toss up whether I upgrade or whether I replace it. And I think saying that you need to replace your iMac after two years is insane, especially when you consider how expensive these things are. Um, but, and also, I also, it does come down to your needs. So I think that's the most important thing. I don't think there's a general, you know, you should upgrade after this length of time and you shouldn't because it really depends on what you're using it for. Now, before I started, you know, doing YouTube videos, before I needed to do video editing, this was perfect and it, it kind of still is, you know, it handles videos okay, it's quad core and it's a, it's great for what I do online, you know, I manage web websites, a blog, I write and things like that, the big screen's beautiful and it still does everything, you know, that I needed to do. The problem is the boot times, now, it was about a month or so ago, maybe two or three months, there was an upgrade for the iMac, you know, for uh, OS X, 
And during the upgrade, you know, even I wasn't even there, it was upgrading itself and it crashed. It was an absolute pain in the ass, and for whatever reason, the time machine backups weren't working. Eventually, I, you know, I had to clear it and then just try to get all my files back. Since then, I've actually not been using it, so it's cleared and it's marginally quicker than before. I've got about 20, I came with 4 gigabytes of RAM, by the way, but I put in, I think I've got about 20 gigabytes of RAM, so it's fast in that regard. The problem that I've got with this is twofold. One being the hard drive that I'm thinking about replacing is that booting up is slow, and if I put it on, you'll see what I mean. Now, booting up, I don't think I even, I think I need to hold that more. There we go. Um, booting up is slow, but the actual screen comes on fairly quickly. It's once the screen, you know, the, the all loads up, the still, you still hear the hard drive spinning round for a good couple of minutes afterwards, and it takes a little bit of time. Now, if you're happy to just, you know, switch it on and then go away and come back five, ten minutes later, then that's fine, but since getting, you know, a laptop from 2016, which has a really f fast SSD in it, I've gotten used to switching the computer down, and it just boots up in seconds, and it's really noticeable now when I go back to this, how slow the performance is. And, you know, and when I'm thinking about what to do as far as should I buy an ultra-wide monitor, should I buy another laptop, all these different things, and I was talking uh, with Evil Gage about this the other day, I'm still swaying, I keep swaying back and forth at, at this point, I'm still not sure. But you can see here that it does take a lot, a lot of time to boot up. And there's pretty much nothing on this now. Pretty much nothing on it. All the files that I did have that I could salvage are on the Time Machine backup that I've got there. There's nothing really on it. I've installed my applications again. Um, and you can see it's still loading up. Now, I don't actually have that plugged in at the moment. I've got it plugged into this one. Um, but you can see there, once it's actually loaded up, you can probably still hear it a little bit. It takes like another couple of minutes for all the apps and, you know, everything to start to get going. Still works great though. And, um, you know, that is still a good system. So it, it's kind of, this is, this is the, the problem because I wouldn't get much for that if I had to actually sell it. If I went to CEX, like a, there's like a second-hand store in the UK. I'd give it 300, I'd maybe get about 400, 450 um, if I sold, sold privately. Um, and really, again, it comes down to the, should I replace or should I upgrade? Now, the reason I'm thinking maybe about upgrading and not just sticking an SSD in there is because for like the 140, 150 pounds, I could put that towards a new system, a new PC, a new laptop or something like that. And, you know, if I, I was looking on SC, uh, CEX, which is that website I was talking about, and you can see here, like, the 6700HQ, which I've searched for, it's the Intel processor, it's quad-core. This is actually 6820, but for video editing, this is an i5 from 2009, it's quad-core. It does handle video okay, there's, there's not too much stuttering, it, it, it encodes okay. But I found that when I started encoding videos through this one, I was encoding videos about four to five times quicker. And that's quite significant, it's a difference between you know, doing a, a video for, you can see that I've uploaded the review today of a speaker, and you can see all the, you know, that's the, the Premiere Pro file. And once you've actually finished the file, finished the video, and you've encoded it, it took about, what was that, that was about 12 minutes long, I think it was about 25 minutes or so. In this, you're probably talking the best part of two hours, and it does hold, hold me back. So, for me, for what I do, that becomes an issue, and it's perhaps why I'm thinking about not replacing the, the internal hard drive with an SSD and leaning more towards upgrading my hardware. If you look at CEX, so this 6700HQ, um, it's a 6820 in there, but they're very similar, so I should see similar performance. A 6700HQ, you know, in theory, I should get four times faster encoding using that chip. And you can see here, like, you know, 435 pounds gets me this HP laptop. And it's actually not that good a deal, actually, because brand new, you can buy it for like 490 That's a really good quad-core processor for that price. It really is, you know, if you look at, for example, second-hand a MacBook Pro with the same processor, talking close to £2,000, that's the Apple premium, and it is a lot of, um, a lot of money to pay. And for me... 
that is um, the dilemma that I've got. I wouldn't say a dilemma, but you know, this is what I need to consider. Should I just keep it around, perhaps put it downstairs, put an SSD in it, that's another option. Stick an SSD into the optical drive and just keep it downstairs and just use it as a backup, you know, just for writing and things like that. And then down the line, I'll buy another laptop, I'll buy something a little bit more powerful, a quad core. Now, I'm not coming to this, you know, this video, I'm not trying to sway you guys one way or another. I really do think that it comes down to what you're using it for. If I wasn't doing video editing, up, upgrading that to an SSD would be a no-brainer. I could use it for like probably another five, six years. Now, you do have to obviously take into consideration that parts can fail, you know, different components in the computer can fail. It's not just a hard drive that can fail, the motherboard can fail, maybe you can get problems with the CPU, RAM's easy to replace and things like that, but you know, there's other things that can go wrong. If your motherboard fails, that's it, it's done, you know, because the price of upgrading up the motherboard and the CPU is just not worth it. Um, but it really does come down to what you're going to use it for. So if you have an iMac, you might have something from, anything from, or a, a MacBook as well, anything from say 2007 onwards, you're gonna get a huge jump in performance if you've got a, an older drive, a spindle drive, and you wanna replace it with a fusion drive, a hybrid drive, or an SSD, you're gonna see a huge performance jump. But it does come down to what you're using it for. For me, I'm swaying towards either just keeping it and buying another laptop and keeping it downstairs, kind of taking it out of my work equation here and keeping it as a backup downstairs, or just selling, selling it, buying another, you know, buying a good monitor or buying two monitors and just buying a good laptop with a good CPU. I don't want to get to the point where this is holding me back with my work and it, it was before sometimes, you know, when things are loading, if you, if you just use your computer for Facebook and whatever, you know, browsing the web shopping, this isn't really a major problem, but when you're working, if something's going to hold you up and hold you from doing your work, it's a major problem. That's when you need to upgrade. So I'll leave it on to you guys. It really was just something I just wanted to kind of talk, bring up this issue. And for me, I don't think I don't subscribe to this. By the way, again, you know, I was saying that, but I don't subscribe to that. That two to four years, and you should be thinking about you know replacing your iMac. That's insane, unless you're you know like a a photographer that really, or some sort of video editor that you always need the latest, you know, highest tech, best performance um, computer, and if you've got money to burn, maybe that's what you're going to do. But I think if you're, you know, maybe 2011, 2012, iMac, 2009, that kind of thing, or a MacBook from that time, you're going to see a huge performance boost, you're going to see faster booting times, you're going to see faster times just, you know, operating the system and things like that. And it's a relatively cheap upgrade when you look at it. But because I, you know, can put that money towards something else and perhaps put it towards a rig that long term is a better solution, that's, you know, what I need to decide. And, and I've swayed back and forth on this quite a few times the last few days because I think it'd be a waste to sell that for 300 because it's such a fantastic display and it still works great so that's leaning me towards keeping it and just upgrading it and you know just seeing how I go from there. Thanks for watching guys I'd love to hear what you think of it, about this I will link to you know the, the the articles that are linked there let me know what you think if you've got an iMac or a, a MacBook and you, a MacBook or even a PC and you have upgraded in the past let me know let me know in the comment area and let me know whether you think it turned out to be a good upgrade whether how the, I'd like to know how the upgrade procedure went as well. And um, yeah, generally just leave a comment. Love to, uh, you know, as you know, I love hearing from you guys. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll speak to you all soon.